live a life that is worthy of emulation. Live a life that can attract somebody. Do you desire to be fruitful? The qualification for fruitfulness is that you must abide in him. the casting down you will announce that there is a lifting up <laughs> hallelujah come on hallelujah <laughs> ladies and gentlemen I may not understand everything God is doing you may not understand everything God is doing I admit to the fact that there are things there are things that are most times God would do something that you may not understand I may not understand but one thing I know is that in the end the victory is mine I don't need to understand every move of God uh, for his ways are not our ways. Uh, his thought is different from ours. Uh, I may not understand what God is doing part time. Uh, I may not understand how he's doing it uh, but I, in the end uh, whatever God has done is for my good. Uh, for the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love him. Uh, I don't need to understand. I may not understand. Uh, but in the end, victory shall be mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to share God's word with us uh, very briefly right now. Uh, uh, the devil has got an agenda. Uh, uh, the devil has got a program. Uh, uh, the first thing he wants to do to you is to convince you that God is not interested in you. He want to convince you that God doesn't care about you. He's telling you lies. He's telling me lies uh, that God is not a caring God. He's telling you lies. He's telling me lies uh, uh, that God uh, is not caring for us. Uh, that God is not interested in our matter. Uh, uh, that's a lie but that's what he's telling you. Uh, that's what he's trying to tell me. He's making efforts to convince you. He's making efforts to convince me uh, that God is not interested in my matter. Most times uh, he will ask you questions like uh, if God love you why will you be going through what you're going through? Uh, if God care about you uh, why are you still where you are? Why is this and that happening to you? Uh, if truly God love you uh, uh, are you supposed to be like this? Uh, are this and that supposed to happen to you and what is he trying to do he's trying to convince you that God doesn't love you he's trying to convince you that God doesn't care about you oh, but ladies and gentlemen if you want to use your human reasoning if you want to use your human sensibility oh, to think about the things of God oh, your sense will tell you oh, that it looks like it's true that God doesn't care but the truth of the matter is uh, I, I may not understand God sometimes. Uh, I may not understand his ways sometimes. Uh, uh, but in the end uh, I will appear victorious. Uh, in the end uh, I will imagine winner. Uh, how he does it is not my business. Uh, how he's doing it is not my business. Uh, uh, but the truth of the matter is uh, I may not say it. I may not know it. Uh, uh, but God has a good plan for me. You may not say it. You may not know it. But God has a good plan for you. If you believe he has a good plan for you, give me an amen. Yeah. It, 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 the enemy may want to convince you. He may want to tell you that uh, of a truth uh, that God doesn't care. Uh, that of a truth uh, God doesn't love you he, he, he may show you facts 
he, he, he may give you reasons uh, within, within uh, uh, the circumference of human uh, uh, senses and reasonings. Uh, he, he may give you points uh, uh, that looks like uh, they are factual. Uh, but the truth of the matter uh, is that no matter how sensible uh, and sensitive uh, 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 and sensible they may look, uh, the truth uh, is that truth is not in it. He, he truly cares. You may not understand him, but he cares. You may not see it, but he cares. You, 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 you may not be too sure uh, because your human mind cannot comprehend uh, the things of God. Uh, but he truly cares. He truly loves you. You may not see reason right now, but he loves you. Help me tell your neighbor, say he loves you. He loves you. You may not see it, but he loves you. Uh, you. You may not sense it, but he loves you. Uh, 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 there may be nothing around you uh, uh, that proves that he does, but he loves you. Uh, please help me convince your neighbor, say he loves you. Uh, he he, he, he loves you. You. He love you for real, for real. Help me tell your neighbor. He love you. He love you. It may look like you are down now, but he love you. Your pocket may be dry, but he love you. Your family may be going through some tough times, but he love you. Your heart may not be speaking the right language, but he love you. It may look like things are not working right now, but he love you. Oh, please help me talk to your neighbor. Convince your neighbor. Say he love you. If you can hold on a little while, in the end you will see that he love you. Uh, uh, let me tell you something about uh, about the man uh, about the man uh, that is trying to convince you uh, uh, then uh, I, I will talk to you the word of God uh, uh, for a short while uh, and I will let you go uh, you, you know who he is uh, he, he, he is uh, uh, a cherub uh, he, he is uh, an archangel uh, he, 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 he was uh, and he still is uh, uh, the handmaid of God uh, he, he, he was uh, uh, in the presence of God all the time uh, he was uh, the beloved of God at a time uh, his name uh, is Lucifer uh, uh, and I, I like to say this to you uh, he had a place in God he had a place in God he enjoyed who God was uh, he enjoyed the presence of God all the time uh, he appears before him uh, because he was the Lucifer uh, the archangel uh, in charge of praise and worship uh, and let me tell you tide of God. Uh, uh, praise and worship uh, is the food that God eats all the time. It's the food that God eats all the time. Uh, and he was in charge of it. Uh, so every other time, uh, he was always before God. Uh, he appeared before God. Uh, he was walking hand in glove with God. Uh, he was so close to Jehovah. He was so near to Jehovah. He was so close to him. Uh, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, something happened. Uh, he lost his place. He lost his place. He mixed his mark. He lost his position. He mixed what he should have been. He lost his place of glory. He lost his testimony. And you know what he doesn't want to see? He doesn't want to see any of you get close to God. He doesn't want to see any of us get close to God. He doesn't want to see it. He abhors it. He doesn't want it to happen at all. Uh, that is why anytime he sees you close to God, he will attack you left, right, and center. And what is interest, he's not attacking you because he wants to attack you. He's attacking you so he can remove you uh, from that place. Uh, so he can take you away uh, from the presence of God. Uh, he, he will attack you. He will do anything to you uh, just to make sure you don't get close to God. Anytime he see you, that your spiritual life is beginning to develop. Anytime he see you, that you are developing a relationship with God and the relationship is becoming deep and closer. He will come with all manner of attack. He will come with everything. He will do everything he can to separate you from God. Why? Because he lost his place. He also wants you to lose your place. Because he lost it. He doesn't want any man to get it. That is why you need to be wise. Uh, the Bible says you should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, and you know some of us, uh, we, we, we are not sensitive enough uh, uh, to deduce when the enemy is coming. Uh, we are looking for Lucifer that has horns. We are looking for when he will come with long horns and tell you I am devil. 
My baptismal name is Satan. And that's what we're looking for. And because he doesn't appear that way, when he comes, you wouldn't know. Most times he will appear with tie and suit. Most times he will appear like the angel of the light. That's what the Bible said. Most times he will appear like a brother in church. Most times he will appear like a sister in church. Most times he will even appear like a pastor. Most times he will appear like an angel. Most times he will appear like a pretty girl in the church. Most times he will appear uh, in, in, like an usher. He will appear uh, 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 like, like a praise leader. He will appear. Uh, he will appear in all manner of forms. Uh, he can appear like your brother. He will appear like your mother. He will appear like your father. But what is his interest? Uh, his interest is to separate you from God. he's fighting is to separate you from God he want to remove you from God he want to take you away from God and the truth of the matter is uh, you are looking for Satan with horns uh, to come to achieve that no most times he will come as a husband most times he will come as a child most times he will come as a wife he will come as a sister he will come as a brother he will come as a father he will come as a mother. But what is his, his interest? That is why the Bible did not say, by their horn we shall know them. By their color we shall know them. By their size we shall know them. He said, by their fruits we shall know them. Anybody that comes around you whose agenda and program is to separate you from God, nobody needs to tell you that that person is a devil. It's the Lucifer you need to burn. You need to bind him and you need to separate yourself from that fellow. No matter who he is. Anybody that wants to separate you from God. Uh, that person is a bad influence. That person is a satanic agent. No matter how the person appear. No matter what the person claim to be. Ladies and gentlemen. You cannot truly praise God or worship God more than Lucifer. No, you can. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. It, 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 there are names the Bible call him that is too big for my mouth to repeat it about him because he's a fallen angel. Eh? Uh, 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 but ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about that man who is Lucifer. We are talking about that man who is an archangel. He, I'm talking about that man whom the Bible, among all the angels, only two angels in the Bible were recorded with the name attached to them as anointed. He is one of them. The Bible called him the anointed cherub. That's what the Bible called him. The anointed cherub. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why I fear God. And every instrument in the hand of God, we must manage well. Because God is one God that does not give and take. Once he anoints you, the anointing has become your anointing. The anointing can be corrupted, but it is an anointing. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why when you meet people like us, man of God, you will take your time because wherever he takes me to today, I am a weapon. One thing is sure, he has given me some power and he's not going to take it away. He's not going to take it away. Don't let anybody deceive you. The power with which God has anointed me today it will remain in me. The, the, the truth of the matter is that the reason I want to live a good life is not to retain the anointing. It is because I want to go to heaven. It is because I want to go to heaven. I am not trying to do good so that the anointing will be retained. No, because whether I do good or do bad, I am anointed, I'm anointed. For the gift and calling of God is without repentance. I am not doing what I'm doing because I have repented. I am doing what I'm doing because God has empowered me. If you help me to live a good life, you are not helping the anointing. You are helping me to go to heaven because anywhere you take me to, the power of God will still be at work. Can I still talk to you now? 
Come on. Can I still talk to you? Ladies and gentlemen, if he did not take away the anointing of Lucifer, he does not take away anybody's anointing. You can say anything about Lucifer, but you cannot say the guy is not powerful. You can say that. And that was why uh, the only angel in heaven that was qualified to fight him was the archangel in charge of battle. Because that is his calling. That is his own calling. His own calling is battle. So that was the angel that appeared to fight him. If not, the host of angels were there. The other cherubims and the seraphims were there. None of them, he is higher than they are. None of them could talk to him because in the field of the spiritual, everything is according to your class. The Bible said they ran and they never broke ranks. No junior ranked angel was able to appear before him. It takes Michael the archangel to appear. And let me tell you, that guy is an influential archangel. Because when he was leaving heaven, he didn't leave heaven alone. That means there are some angels who believed in him more than they believed in Jehovah. Don't let me tell you about the man we are fighting. There were some angels who believed in him more than they believed in Jehovah. And when he was leaving heaven, they followed him. They saw that he was falling, they fell with him. They saw that he was going down. They went down with him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, that is the man we are battling with. Uh, and the Bible call him wise serpent. You can say anything about him, but he's not a stupid one. He's a wise serpent. He's anointed. He's wise. And another thing, that guy is beautifully handsome. If grandma will permit me. Eh? He is beautifully handsome. And it is recorded so in the Bible. You can say anything about him. But that guy. My he, he, yeah. That guy. That guy. He is beautifully handsome. And you know what? The guy was to leave heaven and come here on earth. Angels began to cry on our behalf. For the first time, it was recorded in the Bible, woe to the earth, where the devil is being sent to. Woe, woe. Because they know that that guy doesn't come to a place and leave the place peaceful. He fell. Only once he entered the Garden of Eden, man left the place. That guy is, is, a, is another guy. Only one meeting with Eve that scattered the program of God for humanity. He had one time meeting with Eve. Sat Eve down. Gave her facts. Man never escaped from that meeting. One meeting he had with Eve. He scattered the whole program. And ladies and gentlemen, from that day, we are not permitted to near the Garden of Eden. One meeting. That is the man that is fighting your feet. That is the man that is standing against your feet. And one thing is that the guy didn't come here empty handed. He came here with power. He came here with power. And ladies and gentlemen, God and Jesus understands the significance of power. That is why Jesus said to his disciples, don't go to preach for me. I taught you how to preach, but don't preach. Don't move an inch. Tarry in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. Because you can't stand to do this work without power. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, my brother is it not too early to call me now I, I, I am coming uh, 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 and he said uh, listen that's the man that's the man you and I we are battling with uh, ladies and gentlemen we can say anything about him uh, but you can't say the man hasn't got power and that is why I can tolerate anything uh, but I will not tolerate appearing before you without power uh, because uh, 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 if I appear before you uh, uh, without power uh, whatever I, I stand to do uh, will be meaningless because without power you can't convince this generation 
Uh, uh, Moses said, if your presence will not go with me, uh, don't take me any further. And I began to wonder, why will Moses talk like that? Moses said to God, what will make the difference between us and all other people? It is your presence that will make the difference. Are you still here? Uh, 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 and you know what? I, I may not understand God, but in the end, I will be victorious. Do you accept that? You agree that in the end you will be victorious? It's true that you may not understand. And the truth of the matter is that you will not understand everything. There are some things that God does that are mind-blowing. Oh, some of the things that God does uh, in the beginning they may look like God is about to disappoint you uh, oh, but there's something about him uh, he doesn't disappoint his own in the end you will emerge victorious I may be hungry today but I won't talk mm. it may look like everything is dry today but I won't complain it, it, it may look like I'm going down right now, but I won't cry. It, it may look like everything is falling apart, but I won't cry. Uh, uh, God must have a plan. Uh, there must be something God is doing that I don't understand. It, it, there are some things about him, about his ways that I don't understand, but I will not complain. I will hold on uh, uh, to the end. Uh, because in the end, I believe. In the end, I know uh, that I will emerge victorious. You can't face Lucifer on your own. You can't face him. You can't face him. Oh. You can't face that man. Who are you going to face? What do you know about God? There is nothing you know about God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can't fix the devil when it comes to theology. You can't fix him with psychology. You can't fix him. You cannot. You can't challenge him with theology. He know God more than you. He is the only man who stood Jesus and was quoting Bible. And Jesus is God personified. But he was quoting the Bible to Jesus. Jesus didn't argue with him because arguing with him is wasting time because this is the guy in charge of praise and worship. He is not one of the angels. He's an archangel. He's not an ordinary angel. He's an archangel. What are you going to tell him about God? When he, he was talking to Jesus. He said it is written. Each time he was talking to him, he would say, it is written. And Jesus never argued with one of them. Who are you going to argue with? Do you want to quote the Bible with him? What do you know in the Bible? When you talk about knowledge, you want to quote the Bible with Lucifer. Are you kidding? Do you want to explain God to him? Do you know God more than him? In the book of Job chapter 2, you had him talk to God then you will know that he know God. In Job chapter 2, the Bible says, sons of God gathered, and Satan also came. When he came and sat down, God turned to him and said to him, uh, 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 Satan, uh, where are you coming from? He didn't give God a specific answer. He didn't answer God directly. Ladies and gentlemen, he told God uh, uh, that I am just coming from the earth. I'm moving up and down in it. I don't have home address. He didn't want God to know where he's coming from. He said, I'm moving up and down. I don't have address. And he was talking to God. Can you be smarter than the devil? And God asked him a question. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, for you to know who he is, he know God. He said to God, uh, uh, you are asking me about Job. If not for the edge you put uh, 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 above him, uh, that guy would have cost you to your face. Uh, who told him uh, that God put an edge? He know God. When he sees the hand of God, he knows. Don't ask me why the devil has been facing your family. He has seen the finger of God. So he's attacking the family. Don't tell me why he's attacking your life. He has seen the finger of God. When he sees the finger of God, he knows. When he sees the finger of God, he knows. He knows the finger of God. You don't need to tell him about God's finger. When he sees it, he knows. Don't ask me why he's attacking your business. He knows that the finger of God is in that business. He knows that the finger of God is over your destiny. He knows. He knows. Uh, uh, can you touch your neighbor for me and say he knows? Don't ask me why he has been attacking your life. 
he knows. When he see the finger of God, he knows. When he see the hand of God upon an individual, he knows. He knows. Why? He knows that the finger of God is different from all other fingers. Mm. He knows. He knows. He knows when to attack. He knows whom to attack. For somebody like Jehovah to ask him, have you considered my servant Job? And he was answering God like God is his mate. He said, if not for the edge you put around that guy, and because of that edge, then I want to ask you a question. Who told him that God did? Who told him? He knows. How did he know? He know who God is. When he see something that God is doing, he know God is the one doing this one. When he see the one you're doing yourself, he know you're the one doing it. Am I talking to you right now? Yes, eh? Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 when uh, uh, the two times uh, that Archangel Michael uh, had resisted and fought him, uh, I took my time uh, to observe the actions of Archangel Michael. There was no time Archangel Michael gave him direct insult. Archangel Michael never insulted him directly. Uh, uh, the Bible wanted to record what happened in heaven. Uh, the Bible said there was war in heaven. That's what the Bible said. There was war. Why was it war? Because Archangel Michael is in the same cadre with him. Both of them are Archangel. This one is Archangel Lucifer. This one is Archangel Michael. This one is in charge of praise and worship. And this one is in charge of war. And these two Archangels are important to Jehovah. They occupy two important offices. Archangel Michael met him in heaven when the war was going on. The only thing Archangel Michael could do was to push him down. Hey. He pushed him down. And Jesus came here, who was an eyewitness to what happened, and told us, I saw Satan fall like lightning because this guy pushed him. And the guy is in charge of war. And the Bible didn't say there was worship. If there was worship, he would defeat Archangel Michael like he's a child because that would have been his field. But it was not about worship. If the Bible has said there was praise, a, a war of praise, he would have defeated Archangel Michael like he was a baby. So it was not a war of worship. It was not a war of praise. It was a war of battle, which was the field of Archangel Michael. So Archangel Michael pushed him using his office as the man in charge of war. Allow me when I am in my office. When I sit in the place of my office, you cannot challenge me because in my office I can do anything. But when you enter my office, take your time. If you don't take your time, you yes, sir. When we step into my office, you need to be careful with me. You don't need to like me. When I step into my office, you won't have a choice. But you will nod your head. My alabados. Hey, can I still talk to somebody here? Ah! Bible believing mission in the dwelling place of the God of talk and truth. Uh, uh, you know something? When Moses died, I saw another level. When Moses died, Lucifer said, This man is my property. I know my Bible. The Bible says, Any soul that sinned shall die. And this guy just sinned. He didn't obey God. And every disobedient person is in my level. I must carry the person. Lucifer said, this one is my property. Ladies and gentlemen, there was no man on earth that could challenge Lucifer. Because as at that time, he was having the seal of man. He was having the authority of man. It was because of the authority of man that he was having. That is why the Bible called him the God of this world. 
he was the God of this world. Uh, uh, that was why when he was tempting Jesus, he said to Jesus, worship me, bow down and worship me. And if you bow down and worship me, look at all the kingdoms of the earth. They have been given to me. They have been handed over to me. Who handed them over to him? It was Adam uh, that handed them over to him. When Adam disobeyed God and obeyed him, Adam handed over the power to him. So he became the God of this world. And he knows his rights. When the thing came into his hand, he knew it has come into his hand. He took charge. He took charge. And when the sons of God gathered, he didn't come in his place as an archangel. He came in the authority of man. That was why he sat in the choicest seat. He sat down in the seat that was facing the throne of Jehovah. That was facing the seat of Jehovah. Oh, why? Man is a tripata being. As God is tripata. So he sat down facing Jehovah. Uh, that immediately Jehovah entered. And you know that guy know his right. He, 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 as at that time he appeared in the, that meeting. I can tell Michael was there but could not talk to him. And all the all other angels. The 24 elders were there but nobody could talk to him. Why couldn't they talk to him? Because he appeared with the authority of man. And the authority of man is a little higher than angels. And there was no, no angel that could talk to him because he was appearing with a higher level authority and he appeared there. And God didn't want him to hear the discussion of the meeting. So God knew that since that guy, this guy has entered this meeting, no need holding the meeting. The meeting was important to God, but the meeting could not hold. Oh, God quickly jumped. Have you considered my servant Job? He said, yes now. I've considered him. I'm supposed to deal with that guy. But if not that you put an edge above him, quickly remove the edge now and I will show that guy pepper. Are you getting it now? Uh, that is the man you are battling with. That is the man you are fighting with. Uh, but when Moses died, I saw something. Uh, after the death of Moses, uh, in the book of Jude, uh, the Bible told us uh, that the same Archangel Michael was sent here. But when Archangel Michael came here, we saw a different Archangel Michael. When Archangel Michael came here, Lucifer didn't fear him because Lucifer knew that Archangel Michael has come to his territory. Because as at that time, uh, the earth was under Lucifer. Lucifer said, okay, I'm going to deal with you here. What, what is it you have come to do? And he wanted to drag the dead body of Moses. Archangel Michael appeared. Archangel Michael was the archangel in charge of war. But Archangel Michael did not fight him here. Because you can't fight a man in the property that is his own. The only thing Archangel Michael said, may the Lord rebuke you. Not me. May the Lord rebuke you. Why would the Lord rebuke him when you were there? Archangel Michael could not fight him at this point because the word of God is a standard and you can break it and do anything. Archangel Michael said, may the Lord rebuke you. Why would the Lord rebuke him? Because there's a word of God that backed up what Archangel Michael was doing and what is that word of God? The Bible said that God declared ahead of time. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. It is left for me. Anybody that I choose to have mercy on, I will have mercy upon that man. I am coming to carry Moses not based on human work but based on my choice. I have decided to take him and there is nothing anybody can do about it. And when he said, may the Lord rebuke you, Lucifer removed his hands and Archangel Michael took the dead body of Moses up to heaven and that was the only way he could carry him. If he had come as Archangel Michael, this was the place Lucifer was going to show him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, brother. Oh yes. He knew his right. The Bible called him the wise serpent. You can say anything about him, but that guy is not stupid. If he walks into any family, just look at that family. You will know that that guy is mean. He knows where to touch you, you will change your language. He knows where to hit you, you will cry. Ah. That guy, that guy is mean. That guy is mean, oh. He knows where he will press you now. Get back here. He knows where to press. When the edge above Job was removed, I read the Bible within 10 minutes. What I saw, then I know that this guy, you don't joke with him. It's me, brother. This guy, you don't joke with that guy. He know what to do. And that is why the, if the slightest chance Jesus got, Jesus gave him a knock he never recovered from. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if that guy could make Jesus cry, make Jesus fall. You know, you know, he brought Jesus to the ground. Yes, sir. My master fell down. My master cried. My master almost changed his language. Jesus know what we are going through now. When we are crying, bah, he understand. That is why the Bible says we have a high priest who is touched by our infirmity. He know the man we are battling with. He know him. He know what the guy can do. So when you cry, don't kill yourself. Jesus understands. He know the man now. Was it not Jesus who came here at the point of fulfilling destiny? He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me, but not my will. Let your will be done. Why will the cup pass over him? Is it not because he hung on a How many hungry or yes, this call pass over me? Give me here. The man touched here somewhere. The guy came here, he cried. Jesus understands. He couldn't carry his cross. He told us every man should carry his cross. Yes, I'm carrying my cross. If I fall, Jesus understands. Because when he carried his cross, he fell. He carried his cross and he fell down. Carried it a second time, he fell down. Turned around and said, Father, I'll give you why have you forsaken me? So when I cry, you know, don't let me talk here. Uh -oh, turn the Bible, let me show you something. And let's get going. I have a high priest uh -oh, that is touched by our infirmities. He knows that the man we are dealing with is a wicked guy. He know he's a mean man. Uh -oh, but one thing is sure, I may not understand God, but he's taking me somewhere. Help me tell your neighbor, say he's taking me somewhere. You may not understand, but he's taking you somewhere. Uh, are you ready? Come on, talk to me, church. Are you ready? Uh, uh, can I talk to you right now? Uh, I may not understand God, but Lucifer, don't tell me nothing. You can never be a friend because the torture of God is more than the petting of the devil. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Instead of the devil to pet me, let God torture me. <laughs> because in the torture of God, I say torture of love. Uh, but if the devil pet you he's painting to pet you and he will change your color at the end of the painting I don't want him to pet me because everything he does has a hidden agenda I don't want any love from the devil because the devil's best love cannot be compared to God's worst hit because even if God wants to flog me he will flog me like a child because he will flog me and still draw me back. Uh, but the devil, I don't want to see love from him. That guy is a wicked man. I don't want to have anything from him. I don't want to have anything with him. Uh, I, 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 are you sharing the same opinion with me now? Uh, can I talk to you? Or you help me tell your neighbor. Uh, say no matter the condition you're in. God love you. You may not understand God. But he love you. Uh, you may not understand him. You may not understand him. Uh, but he love you. He love you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you go through the church calendar, uh, we are drawing close uh, to the departure of our master. Uh, to win, uh, the master uh, will be fulfilling his reason for coming into the world. In the church calendar, uh, we are coming close to the uh, death of our Lord Jesus uh, and his death. Signifies his departure, and ladies and gentlemen, my master Jesus, history agrees, theology is in agreement, and you know something. When I talk of theology, those of you who are newborn babes in in the Lord, who look at theology as as taught, theology is divided into two segments. There are theology who are not biblical, uh, there are theologians who are not religious, there are theologians who are not godly, there are theologians who study theology for, for the knowledge of it, that we call them uh, the, 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 the theologians who base uh, their study within the saints level, uh, they are deep in theology but they are not studying to win any soul they are not studying to go to heaven they are not studying to be religious but they are theologians they are critical about the word of God they are critical 
critical about the things that has to do with God. They are critical about the study of God. And ladies and gentlemen, even theologians agree to this fact. Even those who are philosophers, they agree to this fact. Even the psychologists, they agree to this fact that Jesus was a great man. That Jesus was a great man. Ladies and gentlemen, the Achaeans are in agreement that Jesus was a great man. Muslims may tell you we don't agree, but Quran is in agreement that Jesus is a great man. Because even in the Quran that the Muslims read, the name of Jesus was mentioned more than the name of their own prophet, Muhammad. The name of Muhammad was mentioned in Quran less than the name of Jesus the name of prophet Isa was mentioned more than the name of prophet Hamid you call him Muhammad that's why they say Allah Allah illallah ya Muhammad Rasulullah Muhammad so even in their Islam the name of our God is mentioned much more than the name of their own prophet so Islam is in agreement that my Jesus is great in history. Ladies and gentlemen, based on this fact, I make but to tell you that anybody can believe anything, but nobody that will not agree to the fact that my Jesus was, is, and remains a great man. He's a great man. And now, if he be a great man, I, I'm coming to my point right now. If he be a great man, the words, the last words of every great man is very important. I don't know how many of you who have been close to a great man or a great woman, at the point of that person's departure from the earth, the last words that the person says out is very important. True or false? And uh, now in the church calendar, uh, Jesus is preparing to go, he's preparing to leave, but there is something he has to tell us. John chapter 16 and verse 16. This one is not easy to forget. 16, 16. John chapter 16 and verse 16. So you can always remember it. A little while. Now listen, Jesus was about to go. He bends his heart that he was going to leave the people that he loved. He needs to tell them something. He needs them to hear something from him. A little while. And you shall not see me. And you shall not see me. A little while. Listen. A little while. And you shall not see me. And again. And again. A little while. A little while. And you shall see me. And you shall see me. Because I go to the Father. Because I go to the father now now i don't I, do you understand it my brother I, I don't know some of you may know too much to understand this one but me i don't understand somebody who could just stand up and say a little while you shall not see me and again a little while you shall see me <laughs> Uh, these words, uh, they are too deep, brother. Uh, a little while, you will not see me. Uh, and again, a little while, you shall see me because I go to the Father. A little while, you shall not see me. And uh, uh, again, uh, a little while, and you shall see me because I go to the Father. I read this scripture. Uh, me, I didn't understand. And I said to myself, uh, maybe uh, the disciples that Jesus was talking to will understand. In verse 17. Then said some of his disciples among then, themselves. Then among the disciples they said, what is this that he said unto us? What is this thing that he is telling us? A little while. A little while. And you shall not see me. And you shall not see me. And again. And again. A little while. A little while. And you shall see me. And you shall see me. And because. And because. I go to the Father. I go to the Father. It said therefore. They said therefore. What is this that he said? What is this thing that he is telling us? 
Come, uh, hold on. What is this thing he's telling us? Uh, child of God, uh, there are things God said to you uh, that you may not understand. Uh, but whether you understand it or not, uh, uh, child of God, uh, the truth of the matter remains. Uh, I may not understand him, uh, but in the end, uh, I will be victorious. Uh, I don't need to understand him uh, to be victorious. Uh, I don't need to understand his ways uh, to be victorious. Uh, I don't need to understand everything uh, to become a winner. Uh, he may say some things uh, uh, that I don't understand. He may say some things uh, uh, that are not clear to me. He may say some things uh, uh, that I cannot grasp. Uh, uh, but whether I do uh, or I do not understand uh, the truth of the matter uh, is that don't interpret my father's words to me. Uh, or don't interpret the words of my God to me. Uh, or Lucifer get behind me. Uh, or Satan get behind me. Uh, or don't explain to me what my father is saying. Uh, I may not understand it uh, but I know it's for my good. I know it's for my good. Uh, because one day, I, I was driving my earthly father. We were going somewhere. I need to come to the village and pick him. And for us to uh, go for that event. Uh, so I got to the village and picked him. And I was checking the time. I said we were running late. Uh, so I started speeding. And my father called me. Uh, and he said, Kings. I, I said, Sir. He said, uh, slow down. Uh, drive slowly. Uh, and uh, I, I looked back. I said, Papa, we, we, uh, we are running late. Uh, so I need to speed up uh, so we can get there on time. And my father spoke in Igbo language. He said, Jirinwa York, I will say so. And if I translate this to you, he said I should drive slowly so we can get there on time. Uh, that I should drive slowly so we can get there on time. Uh, that I shouldn't go too fast. That I should drive slowly so we can get there on time. Then I turned and I looked at him, but there were some persons in the vehicle. After, after a while, when we were alone, I said to him, Papa, you said something while I was driving you. You said I should drive slowly so we can get there on time. What does that mean? He said, that's why I like you, my son. He he said oh, that speed you were driving that time if you hit something or you hit somebody or the car the car tire get busted we will stop and start repairing it and the time we will spend to repair it we will spend more long a time and by the time we will finish and get to where we are going we will get there late but if you drive slowly we will get there on time So, so that was the reason I told you uh, to drive slowly so we will get there on time. Uh, and I said thank you. Uh, and I learned that one. Uh, but listen to me, child of God. There are some things that God is saying to you today that you may not understand. Uh, there are some things he had told you in the time past uh, that you may not understand. He said God, there's a way he talks. He looks at a man who does not have a child and he called him father of children. He looked at somebody like Abraham. He said I'm changing your name to Abraham you shall be the father of nations but the guy doesn't have one child what manner of God is this and I began to wonder what kind of God who could look at you today and call you the name that will fit you tomorrow and because you are not seeing tomorrow you don't want to answer the name today because the name he's given you today does not fit your today there is somebody here today looking at your bank account right now looking at your house right now looking at your condition right now everybody should pity for you but in this meeting god is telling me that you are a great woman that you are a great man oh but looking at your pocket you don't look like it but god said call him a great man god said call him a great woman how do i now reconcile it how do i now explain it to you there are some things god is saying concerning in you uh, that I cannot explain to you today uh, that the words of men cannot explain uh, uh, to some of you uh, you are sitting down here uh, very close and near to frustration uh, but God said uh, you are a great woman uh, but God said uh, you are a great man uh, how do I explain it to you uh, how do I reconcile it uh, with your present condition uh, so you may not understand it uh, the devil may tell you what he's seeing in your today but God is telling you what he's seeing in your 
tomorrow and tomorrow is in the hand of God I may not understand it I may not be able to explain it I may not define it to you I may not say it correctly I may not say it how you want to hear it oh but hear what God said his words are different from your words his words and his ways they are different from yours it may look like the journey is about to end for you but just say the rock of Gibraltar I have a plan for you and nobody can stop the plan how do I explain it to you how do I explain it right now you may not understand God but God is doing something you may not see what he's doing but God is doing something you may not understand how it's gonna happen but God is doing something somebody lift your voice and let me hear your email like thunder after now God is gonna step into your matter he will turn your shame to glory I say he will turn shame to glory 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 somebody shout your amen you may not understand him help me give your neighbor high five say you will hear my story help me give that neighbor high five say you will hear my story mark today there's a push on the inside of me I may not understand what God is saying I may not understand what God is doing but there is somebody under this roof after today men shall stand up to welcome you yeah. men shall stand up men, 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 men shall stand up to welcome you nothing around you look like what I'm saying looking around you now nothing around you look like what is coming out from my mouth I hear from God uh, that a new dawn has come I hear from God I hear from God I hear from God I hear from God that something new just started in your life there is somebody here there is a testimony that your village has been waiting for. I came to prophesy that that testimony will come from you. It 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 will come from you. Somebody lift your voice and shout him in like thunder. There is a push for a blessing that carries speed. I want to pray for you as you pray for yourself. Say, oh Lord, may my blessing never delay. Are you ready for that prayer? Say, Father, may my blessing never delay. when I tell you that there is something God will do in this meeting on your head and your story will never be the same again do you believe that one encounter with God today is able to turn your story around do you believe me when I say so talk to me do you believe me when I say so the time has come Bible believing mission incorporated the dwelling place of the God of talk and truth. I said the mark on your face. The same mark is on the face of your father. Yes, sir. It's like a mark that is on every member of your family. Eh? Yes, sir. And I told you that I want to give the family help. There is something that has been happening in the family that is called untimely death. Because of this untimely death, this mark was given to your father's father, which is your grandfather. 
and the mark was given to him by way of protecting him so that he will not die untimely. But funny enough, that mark was on him and he still died on time. All his children, including your father, you were about six years old when your father died. And you were nine years when your mother died. And that way, people have been dying in the family. And right now, your sisters are afraid because in the family where your father has seven sons and four daughters, the seven sons you people are remaining to. Yes, sir. And they are asking you to marry now because you are the eldest right now. Yes, sir. And the reason they want you to marry now is whether you will have a child before you die. Yes, sir. Because by what is happening in the family, everybody believes that you will die anytime. But that is one of the reasons God has directed you here. You live in fears. They pamper you like egg. They don't want you to do anything because they don't know whether if you go out you will die. You want to travel to Senegal, they say no, don't go. Yes. You want to go to Lagos, they say no, don't go, stay around. Because they don't know when death will come. They are asking you to marry. Then you want to marry, doing what? The reason is because they are afraid of the untimely death. But everything that has a beginning must have an end. And today appear to be the end of untimely death in your family. I want to do ministry. People of God, I want to do ministry. Today marks the end of untimely death in your family. Amen. How is it going to end? It is funny to say that in that family now, your father, his own father has six sons. No one is alive. So you don't have a living uncle now that is alive. No one. And your father is the first son. Amongst your father's children, you people are remaining two. Even your father is because he has seven sons. His younger brother that has three sons doesn't have a child anymore. Because three of them are all dead. In the house is left only the, 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 the wife, who is the woman that is alive there now. Uh, the other one, his children are remaining two small children. But those are children, but... You know they are adopted. Yes, sir. Because the man died without having a child. His wife went to adopt the two boys. Uh, they are answering the name of the man. Uh, but yet, the same untimely death is hanging on their neck. They are still very little. But the untimely death is hanging on their neck. They are about seven years old, both of them. But on their neck is hanging on timely death. Uh, so, in your grandfather's family now, you are the oldest man talking about a man. This is the oldest man. So if anything is happening in the family now that need a man from that compound to come out, this is the person. Then you can understand what I mean when we talk about untimely deaths. Therefore, today, uh, uh, let me do the work of he who has called me. A young man, untimely death will not exist in your compound again. Amen. If you go home today, tell your sisters that I said Tokna do said that you will live long. Amen. They shouldn't push you to marry now. Go and struggle. Go and do business like others. They should stop giving you food to eat and keeping you one place. It's by keeping you one place, that's not where death will not come. If death wants to come, even when you are lying down on the bed to sleep, it will come. So tell them that Tokna do said you should go and look for something to do. Be useful to yourself. Eh? Yes. Not they will buy you trousers, buy you shirts, bring you food. Because our only brother, we don't want him to die. Go and look for something to eat. You will not die. Yes. Untimely death has been cancelled. Nobody will die again. Amen. As I make this decree, I want to ask you to do something. At the entrance of your compound, the first place you will see is where you people call Obi, where your grandfather used to live. But there is something like a small hall there. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. It is the hall for the entire compound. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. That particular place is not you people's property. Across the road, 
that compound that live across the road, the only person that is in the village now is one old woman that has a shop in front there. Eh? Yes, sir. The children dog borehole for her. She's in the morning, she will come out there and be selling water to people. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Go home, go and meet that woman. Tell her to tell her sons to come back. When they come back, tell them to take that land. That land where your grandfather's OB is, yes, sir. is not your people's property. That particular land belonged to that family. Your grandfather killed their father. Killed their grandfather to possess that place because he felt it is front of his house. You people have entrance the other side. Yes, sir. Your grandfather, out of saying he was a great man, decided to take that land from that, from that family, built that thing there, collected the land, had all the place for himself. But that place does not belong to him. When the old man was dying, he went to that land and stood on that land and said, if this land belong to Onion's family, it will be well with them. But if it doesn't belong to them, the same way I am dying today, that is how every male child in that family will keep dying till they will all finish. What I'm telling you now, senior your father, your father doesn't know the story. I have prayed for you that there shall be no untimely death in your family anymore. But I want to tell you something. That particular land, the woman should tell her children to come. Don't call any elder. Don't call any meeting. Don't summon anybody. You see that place? Ask them to take. When you ask them to take now, out of fear, they will ask you why. You will say no. That one man of God told you that that land belonged to them that they should possess it. The senior son of that woman will tell you that his father told him, but that they don't want trouble. A lot of shams has been buried there. They don't want to take it. They will now tell you, take. Now, when they open their mouth and tell you, take, they have revoked the cause of their grandfather. Then what I said now will work. Declare it. Ask them to take. Fear will not let them take. Even their mother will not let them take. But tell them take. Don't tell their mother why you are calling them. If you tell her, she will not call her sons. Because that land has taken a lot. A lot of things was buried there. But the only thing you need to get it broken, let them open their mouth and tell you that's all I said don't call elders don't invite anybody in your meeting in the meeting between you and them because you don't know who will come to advise good and who will come to advise bad village people are wicked if you do what I have said I sign for you I stand for you anywhere there will be no record of untimely death in your family anymore. Amen. But obey my words and do what I have asked you to do. You will come back to share testimony. Amen. When eventually they tell you, take. Okay? When they tell you, take. You will need to come back here. There is a particular thing in that land. I will assign a pastor here to go with you. To go and remove. But let the discussion between you and them happen first i will stand here but the reason of this prophetic declaration i will push their mother to take it seriously tell their mother don't delay tomorrow morning go tell their mother if you can go today self after this service go this is my declaration and this is the decree of the watchers this case is hereby settled 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 There is satanic arrangement that has been attacking your life. Yes. You run into trouble from time to time. You yes. came out of prison not long ago. 
Yes, sir. For a matter you know nothing about. <laughs> From time to time, other people will commit offense, they will come and arrest you. You get into trouble time and again over things you did not commit. And that is because somebody in the compound does not want anybody to raise his head. And you became the only son amongst five daughters. You have five sisters. Yes. You are their only brother. Yes. Your sisters are always asking you, why are you always bringing trouble? And when you try to explain to them that it's not you, they will ask you, are you the only person here? Anywhere you go to, you went to Lagos, you ran into trouble. You went to the house of the one living in Port Harcourt, you went to prison from there. Yes. Now you came out of prison, you are in Abba. Yes. And the two times last week, you were arrested yes, sir. over something you don't know about. <laughs> and this is how you run into trouble time and again. Can you imagine somebody going to prison for an offense he didn't know the people that committed? Not that you were part of them. You, he doesn't even know the people. But he went to prison for it. And that is how he has been running into one trouble and another. After one trouble, he will run into another trouble. After that trouble, he will run into another trouble. Because a wicked man in the compound said, I will not let this boy have peace. You are growing old. Go to school. You can't go to school because you got admission to school in Abia State University. But you went to school and ran out of school because court boys will not let you rest. And your sister said, instead of them to kill you, come out. That's how you came out of school. Eh? So you are not a graduate today, but, but you had admission to school. And this is how the enemy has been following you to stop and destroy your future. But today, you are standing one-on-one -on -one with the one carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Tokunadu. What have I come to do? I will not end the case. I will end the source of the case. The truth of the matter is that you don't have a case in the first place. But there is a wicked man who was responsible for killing your father because of a particular land that is close to the local government. That is close to the local government because of that land your father died because of the land all this trouble is coming on your head your sisters have said leave the land for them uh, oh, but you you are not even going after the land but the man is aware that he cannot have that land except you die <clears throat> but now that you will not die and he said he must kill you to have the land so he will die for you to have the land <clears throat> he will die for you to be free now I change it from the root nobody will arrest you for an offense you did not commit again today is what date 30th 30th ok so the month is ending tomorrow this tomorrow Okay, your uncle will end with the month. Yeah. Um, this case is hereby settled. 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 Yeah. Young, man, yeah. young man, as you get home now, relax yourself. Okay, your sister married to Zitem. Yes, sir. You are living in her house now in Abba. Yes, sir. In as much as I have prayed for you now, you will not be arrested for an offense you did not commit. But that primary school at Obo Hill, where you go to join boys to smoke, stop going there. God bless you. Go and sit down.
you will not die untimely. The devil has said his own. I don't care what doctors are seeing or what anybody is seeing. As you stand up from here now, you are fine. Stand up and leave. Young man, come. Uh, 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 is there anywhere around cemetery market that they call Ovarel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are some bad boys around Ovarel who are planning and making arrangements to attack your shop. They are making arrangements to attack your shop. Those boys always hang around over there. It's true, sir. Uh, uh, they are making arrangements to attack your shop. And uh, they want to kill themselves, not you. Amen. Mm. Are, are you a member of this church? You are a member of this church? Full member, sir. Full member. Ah. Today is Thursday. They want to attack. Uh, uh, they've been going to places. They've been attacking from one person to another. There was a time they planned to shoot you. They are keeping that area very hot. In the recent time, they've been ro robbing and shooting and all that. Oh, yeah, come. They say they will attack your shop tomorrow. Touch me. Oh, yeah, go. What you let me come on there? Well, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to but because their gathering is not of me, they must surely scatter. Every gathering that is not of him, as they gather against you, they shall scatter for your sake. Somebody shout amen like thunder. There is a serious sacrifice that was made to scatter the ways of your children. That wicked sacrifice was done from the village. Was done by somebody who was supposed to be a father to them. Somebody who was supposed to be defending them. That person is the person that did the sacrifice to make them useless. Don't blame your first son. Don't be complaining about him. Don't be thinking he's a useless boy. Selling what the father left behind. He's not doing it out of his clear eyes. Today, they are pushing him to be rebelling against you. To even beat you up because they want to scatter him and make him useless. And right now, he doesn't know what he's doing. But now, uh, 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 if an evil man has done a thing, uh, 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 an anointed man can undo it. There is a reason why God brought you here. That which they have done against him, I cancel it. Amen. And each time they see any angle or any means from where God has opened the way for you to eat, they will close it. And that is the reason they are closing the side of your son-in-law now. He has a good job. He's working in a good company. Yes, sir. And because uh, 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 he came to marry your daughter, they saw that from there help will come. They decided to close him up and make him a poor man so that you will not eat. But now, look at you and look at me. And I am the one carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Tokunadu.
and I am the one carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Toknadu. Mama, stand up. Look at me. Look at my face. Uh, I, I, I don't want to ask you whether you believe because whether you believe or not this is the work of the devil and my bible says for this purpose was the son of man made manifest to destroy the works of satan uh, 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 satan has done it and i want to cancel it a man walking in a good company like that all at a sudden his hands are dry with money but it, it was not like this when he came to marry he had money when he came anything they, they needed he was bringing money but right now his hands are becoming dry I said no I said no I said no I cancel it now it is my word against their word your son will not be a useless son sitting in the place of my office I therefore decree and declare that this case is hereby settled. 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 What's your leg? Who get the money? Okay, come here. Stand up. Stand up very quickly. If they kill you now, what will be their game? Why are they after your life? One reason I won't let them kill you. It is not just you they want to kill. But they want to kill you and kill your son. They want to kill you and kill your only son. But say it will not work. It will not work. Amen. Say it will not work. It is not work. Uh, 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 do you believe in Bacolin? Yes, sir. Is he a student? Yes, sir. Is there anybody here that know him? Is your brother? Do you know the school where the son is? You don't know the name of the school? Is he an only son? Yes, sir. Because God told me that they want to kill him and kill his only son. And as I was talking to the, 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 the madam there, I turned and I looked at his face. I saw that there is a satanic projection on him to kill him. The thing has eaten deep into him. As he is now, he's not well. He's not well. I'm not asking him. I'm telling you what God said to me. He's not well. And it's a serious matter. And the very first time that thing knocked him down, they called the son to return back from school. And your son returned back from school. When the son came to him and touched him, the same thing they did to him got into the son yes, in the realm of the spirit. Yes, and the both of them were together in the hospital. Yes, These were the things God told me. That's why I'm asking. Yes, in Anambra State. That's where he is now. Yeah. Do you believe I am a prophet? Eh? Tazan. Okay, you know the school? Okay. Do, do you believe I'm a prophet sent by God? Yes, sir. You believe in my prophecy? Yes, sir. Everything that was done against you and against your son, I have turned it. Amen. I didn't say I will turn, I said I have turned it. Amen. Go. Bible believing mission in the dwelling place of the God of Talk. Do you know you are a champion? You don't know, sir. Uh, 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 there is greatness on the inside of you. People around you are seeing you as a blessed man, but the blessing you are seeing. Is nothing compared to the blessing that God has arranged for you. My brother, get close to me. Let me open door for you. Amen. Let me open financial doors. Your money is tied down here and there. Your money is hanging here and there. Come close. Let me release all this money. Young man, I 
I want to surprise you. There is something very mysterious happening in your family right now. Yes. For the past two weeks, your father has not been sleeping. Sleep. Yes. He can't close his eyes and sleep during the day, during the night. No way. He has gone to hospitals, taking drugs, all manner of drugs. He will be awake like this, with his eyes wide open. It's a serious trouble in your family right now. That's Is it true? It's true, sir. He has been going from hospital to hospital. No solution. He cannot sleep. And the man is dying. He's becoming very weak and weak, dying, but his eyes are open. He cannot sleep. I will show why I am the carrier of the prophetic mandate of the God of Tokunadu now. The thing sounds mysterious, isn't it? How somebody for two weeks cannot close his eyes. Not during the day, not during the night. Every time his eyes are open. The man is becoming weak. The man is dying, but they can't trace it. Oh boy. If you run to the house in the next 15 minutes, you will meet your father sleeping. This night, this night, your father will sleep like a child. Enough sleeping. Tell him not to take any tablet anymore. He will be sleeping good. But something is going to happen. I'm sorry. That God's ways are not our, our ways. Your mother is the second wife. Yes. The first wife is in the house. Yes. Sir. Your father married your mother because he was looking for a male child. Exactly. Sir. The first wife gave birth to four daughters. Yes. Now, after marrying your mother, your mother gave birth to you and you became a male child. Second one, a male child. Then the first wife now got pregnant and gave birth to a male child. So, two of you are senior to her first son. And the woman is not bothering herself. She's fine. She loves you people. But your mother feels that the woman is a challenge. I'm sorry, young man, but I have to say the truth. Your mother wants your father to die even without your knowledge. Why does, he want, why does she want him to die? Your mother wants your father to die because she has forced your father to write a will that makes the little thing your father have to be yours and your brother's own only without including the little boy. And your mother feels in her heart that if he die now with the will in place, she has everything, so let him die now. And she doesn't want to come out openly to say, I killed him. So, she brought something that the man will gradually and gently die. But right now, young man, I'm going to do something that you may not like, but it is not about what you like and what you do not like. Your father will sleep this night, but your mother will not sleep. For whatsoever a man so, he shall reap it. So, from, from this time, in the next 15 minutes from the time I settle this matter, your mother will no longer be sleeping. And the same thing she planted in the food of your father will get transferred into her system. So, the death she wanted your father to die, she will die. I, I'm sorry. You are crying, boy. You are crying. How I wish I would change my language because of your tears. But I don't change like that. Even though you are crying, she will still die. Because she wants to kill a man who has done nothing. She wants to kill a man who has shown her love. My brother, some women are wicked. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But there are women that you don't need them around you. Some women are devil incarnate. I'm sorry we are talking of your mother. You love your mother so much. But luck has run out of her. Uh, your father has to leave and she has to die 
and this is my judgment how i wish i can say something else but i have spoken and i have spoken and there is nothing anybody can do about this matter this case is hereby settled settled I want to give you quick help now. Child of God, have you ever read the scripture and you see the Bible say where there is no vision, the people perish? The man who you live in the house with as your husband. As, lo as far as you know, this morning, he has traveled to Enugu for outside work. Yes, sir. And he will not come back this week, but he will come next weekend. Yes, sir. That is what you know. And what it means is that this night, you're going to be alone in the house with your son. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. I want to advise you now as a prophet. This night, don't sleep in your house. Yes. Things has become so tough for your husband. He didn't go to Enugu. Your husband is at Obibo. In his friend's house. He has arranged some boys. Who will come to your house this night. To come and carry your baby. He left the house. And told you he's traveling. For outside work. So that. He will not be there when they will come. Only you will be in the house. Some boys will come there, break the door and enter. Only one slab, you will give them your son. They will gently carry the son. Your husband has sold the boy and collected money. They are coming today to carry the boy this night. What are you going to do now? After this service from here, don't go back to your house. You know what you will do? Don't tell anybody. Go to your mother's place at old express here yeah. go to your mother's place carry your son to your mother's place go and sleep in your mother's place your husband will call you this evening to ask you are you in the house you say yes i'm i'm permitting you to say that your husband and those people who paid him will be in trouble because by the time they will come this night they will break the door and enter they won't see you where there is no vision my people mm -hmm. perish. Abonye gaburu meni, oye keri beno wa gaburu meni. Pitch night. Did you hear what I said? Stop crying. Stop crying. Don't bother. Don't cry. Hold yourself. Don't cry. It's not a crying matter. Carry your son to your mother's place. Go and relax there. Your husband has collected 300,000. And he has sold his son already. Now, he is at Obibo now relaxing. But he told you he is going to Enugu for outside the work. He didn't go to Enugu. He is at Obibo. He is relaxing. This night... He will drink, feel happy, thinking his deal has worked out. But they won't see you when they come. Am I permitted to touch your son? Can I touch him? You will not be angry. Do you know why I want to touch him? When they check this night and they will not meet you, they will want to make another arrangement. I want to put a tequila on this boy. Anybody who touch him will be in trouble. Anybody who carry him will carry trouble. Nobody will use the head of this boy for ritual. Nobody will use the head of this boy to do anything. Nobody will buy this boy. This is a decree of the watchers. Can I touch him?
bring him to me. What? Bible believing mission in the dwelling place of the God of Talk and